Greetings folks and welcome back to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and, well, lovely. Uh, we are looking at the Raspberry Pi Pico again this week, uh, albeit an emulation of the BBC Micro on the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is nostalgia and wonderful. Um, we'll also be looking at the Ink Plate 10 on Crowd Supply during funding website things. And luckily we have an Ink Plate 6 to give away as our mystery box prize this week, although there's not so much mystery in it. So that and much more on this week's show, which we should probably get on with right now. We are going to start this week talking about the Raspberry Pi Pico once again because it is the most exciting thing happening at the moment. And by the way, uh, very exciting indeed, I finally received my Picos. I got two of them so that um, I can have one of them to be very careful with and another one to potentially uh, let out the magic smoke with. Now this guest post is by This Is Not Rocket Science and it is about the RP2040 chip. Um, in short, they're going to be putting it in the latest iteration of the Goldfish synthesizers and there's a fantastic article here about it along with a little video which I'll play a very short part of now. We are really impressed with this tiny chip. So of course you can watch the whole video here on this blog post and there's a good write up about it as well. Um, just by the way, in case that name uh, rings any bells to you, uh, This Is Not Rocket Science are the people behind the Phoenix modular system. Um, if you have come across the Phoenix 4, um, yeah, uh, this is a whole other thing that I don't have time to go into now. But if you are interested in modular synthesizers, the Phoenix 4 is a very interesting concept indeed. It's sort of like a set of building blocks and yeah. Anyway, that is for another time. Um, I'll leave a link to the Raspberry Pi blog in the description with this. And this isn't the only thing from the Raspberry Pi Foundation that we're talking about today, there is another Pico project that you may have seen around this week too. The other thing that caught my eye this week is this fantastic emulation of the BBC Micro using a Raspberry Pi Pico. As you can see, this is on the Raspberry Pi YouTube channel, um, and uh, there's no uh, guides to how to do this. This is just a show-off video, but what a fantastic show-off video it is. Um, now, on previous shows, I've talked about how I started off uh, using Acorn computers. In fact, the very first two computers I had my hands on, one was an Atari and the other was a BBC Micro. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a fantastic project. And it also uses all of the interesting things uh, about the Raspberry Pi. Um, the fact that it, you can do USB host as a keyboard isn't that interesting, but they're doing all of the uh, visual output using the programmable IOs. Um, I only know that because it says it in the video under the subtitles I'd love to see under the hood of this project. But yes, BBC Micro, massive nostalgia for me, and the Pi Pico can emulate the BBC Micro. It's pretty amazing. So as I mentioned, the BBC Micro being emulated on the Pi Pico sent me down a bit of a nostalgia trail and as it happens, Jeff Marshall recently put out a video about the BBC Micro and using it to draw the tube map. So Jeff Marshall has this video on drawing the London tube map using a BBC Micro. Um, if you've ever coded uh, using BASIC, it's a fantastically um, nostalgic thing to watch him do it. Um, and uh, uh, he explains how he only really has seven colors to work with because there's the eight colors that can print to the screen in mode two. Um, and obviously the two of those colors are black and white. So you lose one of them depending on what you have as your background color. Anyway, you can watch the video for that. Just quickly though, um, I was already aware of Jeff Marshall. He doesn't usually do videos like this. Jeff Marshall's channel is super interesting. We're going off topic here. This has nothing to do with microcontrollers. Um, he Trains, trains are his thing. Um, uh, a lot of good things about inner city trains. I first came across him because there's a video he has about Manor's Metro Station in Newcastle, which is the least used train station in Tyne and Weir. Um, and the reason that I find that interesting is because Manor's Metro Station, um, which is here on the map, uh, here's Manor's Metro, is right next to a pub called Bricks and Mortar. It didn't always used to be called that. In fact, I've forgotten what it used to be called, which is tragic because it's where I used to play my first set of gigs when I was a teenager playing in a band. Anyway, distraction. So Jeff uses an emulator called Beeb M416 because the BBC Micro you see at the start of this video is broken, sadly. Although later in the video, he does play the code on someone else's working BBC Micro. Um, but yes, uh, if you want to know more, I will leave a link to this video in the description. I suggest having a look at Jeff's channel as well. I don't want to make any assumptions about you, but if you're anything like me and you're into microcontrollers and single board computers, you'll probably find some of the things he does when he talks about uh, train lines. Uh, he does some stuff with uh, how to make bus systems better. Um, I've seen a handful of his videos over time, um, and it's a fascinating channel. I think you'll enjoy it. Next up, we have a gift swap between two makers on YouTube. Uh, Becky Stern is a maker from the UK, um, who I wasn't all that familiar with until recently. Uh, the other one is Stephanie Explains It All, who is someone I uh, think I got to know through a live stream she did with Simone Kirch some years ago. Um, either way, they're both fantastic makers on YouTube and they share the same birthday. 
So beginning with the thing that Becky made for her, Stephanie, it is, as you can see, an embroidered picture frame, um, which has a, a nice embroidered cake with some LED candles. There is also a speaker behind it that plays various tunes when buttons are pressed, um, and it also plays Happy Birthday on her birthday. Now, uh, Becky goes through exactly how this has been made um, uh, in great detail, and um, I would rather you go and watch the video than I butcher it. But the one thing I found super interesting is the embroidery machine that she uses um, is using code generated by a new processing library designed specifically for embroidery. So as well as the video, uh, Becky has written a very in-depth blog post on her website about this build, um, which goes through everything that was used to make it and also links to the uh, GitHub for the um, processing library for the embroidering. Um, one thing that is sort of interesting is that the uh, touchboard was used in this. Now we talked about this a little while ago. The touchboard is um, essentially, uh, it's, it's Arduino compatible. It's a microcontroller with a bunch of capacitive touch sensors, but it also has an SD card and an audio out on board, which kind of makes it perfect for this because it means you can simply just plug in an SD card card and have things playing without much fuss. Now I could spend a lot longer talking about this project, it's very cool, um, I love the fact that it combines different kinds of maker culture. Um, as Becky mentions in the blog post, she does embroidery by hand, but this is her doing it using a machine, uh, using a processing library, um, and the machine did the embroidery and then it has the microcontroller, it's just I love it. I really love it. Um, I wish I could talk about it for longer, but I can't because this is only half of the thing. You see, as I mentioned, Becky and Estefany have birthdays one day apart, so they were swapping maker gifts. And what Estefany made for Becky um, is also right up my street, if not maybe more so. So Stephanie decided to make a uh, terrarium, which is a nice thing to make, but a, a terrarium which has a constant earthquake happening inside it, um, which, yes. <laughs> So in short, terrarium, disaster, uh, horse, shaky shaky, and uh, it's actually really clever the way she's done it. It uses an offset uh, spinny weight on a motor and some springs, um, a couple of iterations to make it shake a lot, uh, because what you want in a terrarium with an earthquake inside it is maximum shakage. We want maximum shakage, and uh, maximum shakage was achieved. Much like Becky's project, Stephanie has also written this project up too, um, and it is uh, written up on the blog post on her website. But once again, uh, it is linked in the description of her video. So what I will do is link both Becky's and uh, Stephanie's video in the description. I'm sorry if I called you a Stephanie before. I live in Germany and I pronounce things really weirdly because being from the northeast of England and also learning how to speak Germany from southern Germans makes you say, makes you say words very strange sometimes. I, I very much apologize. Um, but yes, I will link both of these videos in the description, both fantastic channels. I suggest you check them out. Moving on to a quick edition of Funding Website Things, and we are starting on Crowd Supply with Inkplate 10, which is the bigger version of the Inkplate 6, which we will be giving away on today's show. So Inkplate 10 has been around for a little while, and as you can see, they've already completely smashed their goal on Crowd Supply. Um, I wanted to talk about them a while ago, never had the time to fit it into the show, so now I'm really glad that I can. It is a very simple concept and one that I love. Uh, it is an e-ink display, which has an ESP32 powering it, um, and a, a bunch of libraries to help you uh, basically do what you want, make your own e-ink display. Now, I know the obvious thing would be, why don't you make an e-reader out of it, um, but I feel like with an ESP32 and such a nice low-powered thing as an e-ink display, and this this is big. This is, uh, if I remember correctly, 1,200 by 800 pixels. Um, I'll have to check that to be sure. Either way, it is a high resolution and fairly fast refreshing e-ink display that you can do a lot with. So yes, I think it was in the video and I just missed it. 1200 by 825 is the resolution. It's a 9.7 inch uh, e-paper e display. And there are three capacitive touch pads at the bottom and it has a 1.6 second refresh time, which is actually super fast. I've got an e-ink display over there that I've played with in the past, which has a much slower refresh rate than that. Um, I seem to remember reading somewhere that these are unused Amazon Kindle screens, although please don't quote me on that. I might have that wrong. So the Inkplate 10 is an upgrade on the Inkplate 6 because obviously a 10 inch screen is bigger than a 6 inch screen, but there are other upgrades as well. Um, as you can see from this image here, there are a bunch of available GPIOs, which is more than the none or maybe two or three, I think there were on the old Inkplate 6. Um, and uh, there's a USB-C port for power and programming now, which is nice. I, for one, absolutely welcome our new USB Type-C overloads. But the most exciting thing from where I'm standing is the real time clock. Being able to do timing on board um, without having to make web requests means you can keep the ESP32 module in super low power, only do things when it really needs to be done um, uh, and wake it up at exactly the right time to make changes. Um, I can see some super long life projects happening using Inkplate 10 now that it has an RTC on board. 
So perhaps unsurprisingly, you can use Arduino IDE uh, or MicroPython to program the ESP32 on board. And of course, the ESP IDF, uh, this is an expressive chip after all. The other thing that is quite cool, as it mentions down here though, it has a peripheral mode, which allows you to control it by sending UART commands, which I think is a really nice thing. Um, you could just plug it into your computer and have it as a sort of slave, very, very slow resolution second monitor that you can only send things to over UART. I don't know why I'd want to do that, but why not? If you can do it, then why not? Yeah, it'd be fun. So as previously mentioned, they've already smashed their funding goal. They don't need any help getting this thing off the ground. If you would like to get one, however, it is 129 euros for the bare board you can see spinning on the screen right now, and 169 euros for one which has a rather nice 3D printed frame. Um, having seen the 3D printed frame, because um, it's the same kind of frame that came with the e, uh, the Ink Plate 6, they are actually quite good quality. Um, and the good thing about it as well is they have little um, uh, screw terminals on the back. Um, the same kind of thing that you get on uh, lots of other devices which have the, the round bit and then the slot in. I should know the technical name for that, I don't. It just means it's easy to hang on your wall in both portrait and landscape modes. By the way, the makers of Ink Plate have announced that they're doing an Ask Us Anything on the Crowd Supply Discord. Um, it is happening on Wednesday, uh, the 3rd of February at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is actually uh, before this show goes out, but it'll probably still be ongoing when the show goes up. Either way, I'm going to drop into the Discord server. And remember, all of these AMAs you can read after the fact. So um, even if you didn't get to ask a question live, you can find what questions other people uh, asked. And to be honest, the last AMA I checked in there, they were still answering questions after four or five days. It's sort of an ongoing thing. Um, I imagine if you wanted to to reach out to the makers of Inkplate 10 directly, that would be a very good place to do it. Just before leaving Crowd Supply, I want to very quickly cover the Neurostim Duino, which is a project that has not launched yet, but will be coming soon. Um, as always, you can sign up for uh, updates on this, but I will definitely be coming back to this one um, because I know nothing about neuroscience. I have never st uh, studied anything like it before. However, um, yes, uh, Neurostimulation is the application of short electrical pulses on the surface of the skin to stimulate underlying nerves and muscles. Um, I don't know if any of you saw that machine where uh, Michael Reeves forced himself to dab by electrocuting certain muscles. This is a research machine which is not designed necessarily for trolling, but could definitely be used for that. Um, but no, I'm, I'm mostly joking. This is a fantastic and fascinating device, it seems. I am very, very interested in how it will go. Um, I want to get through this very quickly, so I'm not going to go through any of these features. I would just like you to go to this page and read it for yourself and see how exciting it is. There is also a video at the bottom that shows it in use. Moving over to Kickstarter for the Ready Model 100, which is a kit computer for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, um, it is a thing of beauty without a shadow of a doubt. It has a beautiful keyboard. It has a wide but not tall high definition screen. Not, not dissimilar actually to the thing we showed on the show last week, the retro computer from there. The difference is this is a kit that you can buy. Um, and it looks absolutely lovely. It is nostalgic, um, but it has a powerful Raspberry Pi 4 in. This is the kind of thing that um, if I could afford it, I, this would be a no, a non, uh, this would be just done. I would have be getting one. It would be on the way. Well, it wouldn't be on the way. It, this is the early stages of their funding, but you know what I mean. Um, in short, it is just a beautiful aluminium case for the Raspberry Pi 4 with a couple of speakers, a PCB for the keyboard with LED lights underneath it, and uh, that wide touchscreen. Um, there is uh, uh, the ability to add a bunch of ports to the back, um, including antennas and USB-C, uh, uh, HDMI, various things. You can kind of choose that yourself. And um, I say the ability because the whole point of this computer is it is very modular. There are various versions of it that you can get, and so you can make your own decisions. To actually get the thing that you see in the video, you have to spend a fair bit of money. But I feel like that is fair enough because this doesn't look like they've particularly cheaped out on anything, does it? I mean, it's a, it's a really nice looking and solid looking thing. Now, these are, of course, mock-ups and this is, of course, Kickstarter. You should be wary of all Kickstarters. I have no doubt that this kind of a passion project will come to fruition. Um, I think it's far more likely people will back this and then get angry that they didn't read the small print. And in their defense, they do actually have a whole paragraph on the Kickstarter saying, please check the parts included list. Please note the photos we have included are prototype units. Um, but yes, in short, um, you can get a version called the uh, Neo DIY kit, um, which is just complete and ready to go. And it is 323 euros, estimated delivery in April 2021. And that includes the Ready Model 100 base kit, which is the PCB I already mentioned and the aluminum enclosure. Um, it also comes with a, a Pi uh, with two gigs of RAM. Um, what I would probably do if I was going to get it is I would get the uh, Neo version, but without an SPC and I'd put a, a slightly beefier Raspberry Pi in there. And you also get access, of course, to the operating system they have designed specifically for the Model 100. 
And uh, Ready OS is based on Debian. There's 32 and 64-bit versions of it. Um, but yeah, essentially, this is going to be um, an optimized version of Debian for the Raspberry Pi, and I'm assuming this touchscreen. Um, I don't know anything other about the uh, um, Ready OS other than the few things that they said here. And to be honest, it seems fairly basic fare, like Firefox, OpenOffice, VLC, Media Player. But it does also have a software-defined radio, which is very, very fun indeed. So if you're interested in the Ready Model 100, have a look at the Kickstarter page. Have a look at the different pledge types. The most basic pledge you can get, um, which has the Pro DIY kit, which is just the bare bones stuff. It includes the uh, base kit, which is this enclosure and a few other things. Um, and the, then the most basic version that you can get, which is fully built without a Raspberry Pi, is about 290 euros. And the full kit, which has everything you need to get started, is 323 euros. Even with the full kit, bear in mind that the pictures that you see here are modded versions that they have added different things to at different times. It will have more hardware inside the enclosure. You are going to be getting something that is essentially a very, very nice case for a Raspberry Pi. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very, very nice case for a Raspberry Pi and a very cool project indeed. It is time for the mystery box competition, although there's no mystery again this week because I told you we're giving away an ink plate 6. Uh, this is the smaller version of the ink plate 10 that we just looked at on funding website things. This was also on crowd supply initially um, and yes um, it is just such a wonderful idea isn't it? It's e-ink display, ESP32 inside meaning you can program it using Arduino, using MicroPython, there are various drawing libraries around um, and you could do anything with this. You could use it to make art or you could use it to make an interactive weather display on your wall that updates itself every minute or two. There's a couple of user programmable buttons on here if I I remember correctly um, and it is of course enclosed in a very nice little plastic case um, uh, and I'm not going to open this little plastic bag because it's sealed with a nice little ink plate bit of tape there I'll let the winner uh, decide when they want to take that off probably as soon as they receive it and speaking of a winner let's pick one and the winner of the mystery box competition is Kavite Tech, who has not only mastered the three-letter positive YouTube reply, but has won an ink plate six. So we'll be in touch as to how we can get this out to you. Um, we give away something every week on the Electromaker Show, and the way that we pick these prizes is we just take every single person that's commented on the video and pick one of them at random. So um, any comment you leave in the video will enter you into the competition. Um, if you don't want to enter the competition for some reason and you just want to ask us a question, you can do that as well. Um, there's no obligation to take a prize, but free things are nice things. Anyway, we should probably get on with the rest of the show. And to close out the show, a quick bit of news and a product I saw this week that really caught my eye. The NXP Cup, which is a contest hosted by Electromaker about self-driving and autonomous vehicles, has its first prize winner. Now, this doesn't mean that the contest is over. Uh, far from it. There's still time for you to enter if you want. Head to the Electromaker website and look under the contest tab. You will find all the details about the NXP Cup just there. No, the early bird prize winner has been chosen. Um, this contest had an early bird prize winner for any team that managed to put their... Uh, proposal for what they wanted to do in before the end of last year. One of those teams was chosen at random and they win a cash prize of 250 euros. Just to remind you, if you do enter this cup and win, you will win a cash prize of 1,000 euros, second place is 500 euros, and third place is 250 euros. Almost all of the contests that we run on Electromaker have cash prizes, and you usually get hardware directly from manufacturers that you can use for the contest. They're actually a really cool thing to enter. And the early bird prize winner is Matilda Ilbled, whose name I am very sorry, I have probably not pronounced very well. Um, but that is where their, their project totally speed. Um, it's a French team from the engineering school of INSA Toulouse, and their project this year as fourth year automation and electronics students is to develop and improve a super fast autonomous car. They have also included a short video of their car making a turn, presumably completely autonomously, which is fantastic. So yes, congratulations the team from Toulouse that won that early bird prize. I hope that it helps you with the rest of your project. Um, and good luck to everyone else that enters this one. Um, Self-driving autonomous cars are something that I am very, very interested in. I would love to do something like this myself one day. Maybe when the world opens up again, I can find out who in Berlin are hosting uh, autonomous self-driving vehicle competitions and meetups. But for now, uh, congratulations. And to anyone else that wants to enter, as I mentioned, if you head to the contest page on the Electromaker website, look for the NXP Cup and you will find everything you need to enter. Finally for the show this week we are looking at the M60 mechanical keyboard. Now we don't usually look at mechanical keyboards on the show but stay with me this one is a little bit different. That is because this is a fully customizable keyboard that you will build yourself and get your own keycaps for um, and on board it uses MicroPython. 
Um, now, we've been talking about MicroPython a little bit recently. Um, the actual chip that it is using is the NRF52840, which is similar, if not the same one, as is in the MicroBit. I'm probably wrong now that I say that out loud, that sounds wrong. Um, but there's a similar sort of thing. Um, and it has a number of advantages. It's a fairly powerful little microcontroller. You get connectivity straight out of the box with it as well. It can do Wi-Fi, Bluetooth Low Energy, and NFC. So as mentioned, this uses MicroPython, which is a very interesting way of doing things. Uh, that means that you can plug the keyboard into your computer, use the keyboard to actually type how you want the keyboard to work in Python code in any text editor, and then drop it via USB host onto the keyboard and immediately see the update or feel the update of how it all works. Um, I'm sure if I had one, I would find a very fun way to brick it. Um, but it, it just seems like such a nice idea, and it seems like such an obvious idea, but I haven't really come across that many um, custom microcontroller-led uh, keyboards that seem to be this well put together and this well thought out. So as mentioned, this isn't a full kit. It comes with the NRF52840 module. It also comes with the PCB, um, which has space for um, a full complement of 64 RGB LEDs. It has uh, an antennae for Wi-Fi and an antennae for NFC. And it also comes with a screwdriver. Very nice. Um, the kit is available from Maker Diary and it is $45. Um, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to include this at the very end of the show. It might be old news to you, but it certainly wasn't to me. And a micro, micro Python powered keyboard is exactly the kind of thing that uh, yeah, I'm into. I'm, I'm really looking forward to receiving mine. That was the Electromaker Show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, we will be back with you next week. Um, and we have a new mystery box full of new mystery prizes. So we'll be getting back onto that soon. If you would like to enter to win a prize, you just have to leave a comment on the channel. But for now, I hope you have a fine, productive and healthy week. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.